Alright, so the first thing that we need to do is to come up with an algorithm that would allow us to solve this problem and then to implement that algorithm in code. So in order to determine if a list is acyclic, all we have to do is sweep through the entire list starting at the head node right here and then examine every single element's next pointer. And then when you get to a point where you have an element whose next pointer is pointing at null, then you've essentially discovered the final or last element of that list and you could declare the list to be acyclic. Now this is easy for the acyclic case. This is where it gets challenging when we're dealing with the cyclic case. If we, ha if we simply use that algorithm where we check for a null next pointer, then we'd essentially be stuck in that loop right here. And we'd never find this next pointer pointing to null. So we need another approach here. What do we do? We could, for example, use an attribute within every single node called visited. And before we actually visit a certain element, we would check that attribute and see if, it, if it's true. So for example, we look at the first element, visited would be equal to false. And what we do is that we set it to true, indicating that we're actually been over it. So we set it to true, and then we move on keep on doing this to every single element and eventually you'll come back to this one and check that it's visited attribute and realize that it is true and so you stop right then and there and you declare the list to be cyclic but we realize that in the problem statement we mentioned that we cannot modify or tamper with the elements themselves and change attributes or add attributes so we really can't do this approach although it would have been neat so we have to move on with a different approach the next approach involves keeping track of the elements that we've already visited. So if we cannot modify the elements themselves, we're going to create a data structure ourselves. Suppose it was an array. And every time before we visit an element, we check our array and see if it has been already visited. So we, we, we look at the first element, check our array, it's empty, hasn't been visited, so I'm going to store a pointer to it, indicating that I just visited that element, and then I move on to the next element. Then I look at this element, check at my array, see if there is anything that is pointing at it, there's nothing that points at the second element, so I'm going to say, listen, I'm going to visit that element and then move on to the next one. Keep on doing this every time, and then you'll get back to this point. You'll search through your array and see that there is, in fact, a pointer pointing at it, and then you have to stop right there and declare the list to be cyclic. So this works out perfectly. Now, the only problem that is associated with this approach is that we have this overhead right here. We have to store this new data structure in memory, and this is as large as the list, is, list itself. So... Is there a way that we could perhaps do the same thing, so adopt the same approach, but without the need to storing those pointers? And if you look at it carefully, you realize that every single pointer, so example, if you looked at the first element in our new data structure right here, the first element has a pointer pointing to the first element in the linked list. Second element has a pointer pointing to the second element in the linked list, and so on and so forth. So every element in our new data structure correspond to the element that is in the linked list. So can we leverage that in a new solution without having to store all of this? Now if you look at this, so let's go back and trace back. So when we got to this element for example, so we visited the head, then we stored its pointer, and then we got to this element, what we did is we just compared it to that pointer right here, and then we stored a pointer to it. And then we looked at this element and we compared it to that pointer and that pointing, which is exactly the two elements that precede it. You realize that. And when we looked at this element, we compared it to the pointer, this pointer, that pointer, and this pointer, which are the three elements that preceded. So we notice a pattern. So here's what we can do. Let me just reconstruct that right here. Here's what we can do. Now, when I get to this point, I'm going to compare all the elements that come before it in the list to the element that comes after it. So I follow the next pointer, and this is the next. And if I find a match, then I declare the list to be cyclic. This is an excellent approach, instead of having to store. So I'm going to look at the first element. Is there anything that comes before it? No. So I, there's no comparison to be made. Just move on. So look at that element. Now I'm going to compare the whatever its next pointing is pointing at to whatever comes before it. Is there a match? No. Keep on doing this, and you'll get to this point right here. You'll compare the next to what comes before and you see that you'll find a match and then you'll stop. So this saves us the, the memory overhead. But if you look at the execution time that it runs in, you will notice that it's a big O of n squared. Because this involves zero comparisons, this one involves one comparison, this one involves two comparisons, this one involves three comparisons, so on and so forth. In the general case, this would be n plus one times n over two, which is big O of n squared.